Hallelujah! Fishers of Men Charismatic Church. They invite everybody, man, woman, papa, mama, sister, everybody, make una come for this national conference where they call on Changing Truth 2012 and the theme, The Glorious Church. My brother, my sister, make you come now for your salvation and your miracle. This national conference go happen from Wednesday the 5th go reach Sunday the 9th of December 2012. Wednesday will be 5th in a 5 o'clock in the evening. Thursday will be 60. Go reach a Saturday will be 8. Morning session at 9 o'clock in the morning and evening session at 5 o'clock in the evening. But shall on Sunday, 9, 9 o'clock in the morning. And the people with God they don't give power to talk for inside this time as guest speaker. Now Pastor Paul Rika of Holiness Revival Ministry with the Abuja. Brother Michael Thomas Sambo, the man where he died for camp. And Baba God given the grace to see how heaven and hell it be. Plus including the general overseer of Fishers of Men Charismatic Church will be the chief host, Pastor I.G. Wambo. The place where this one will happen, nine Fishers of Men Charismatic Church headquarters, number one, Fort Victory Lane, off Victory Street for New Benin Benin City. Make you come home, free accommodation day, free feeding day, anything will be your problem. Carry and come meet Jesus Christ today. Because as he did yesterday, and I saw he did today, and I saw he did day forever and ever. The unchanging truth of the glorious church. You are going to listen to our beloved brother, King Paul Obeke. He will speak to you the dealing of God with him. Uh, how many of you have read this book, 99% of Christians on the way to hell? Okay, King Paul is the writer of that book. And many tears in heaven, uh, the rapture will soon be happening and many others. And he's going to share with us how the Lord is dealing with him. So, with the love of Christ in us, we welcome to the pulpit our beloved brother, Ken Paul. Hallelujah. And so, Lord, we thank you for what you are doing with us. I pray that you hide me behind the cross. Let Jesus alone be seen and heard. Holy Spirit, take charge. Let heaven be populated and hell depopulated. Sanitize your church. Take all the glory. In Jesus' name, I have prayed. Before you sit down, Can somebody quiet the children? Can somebody help to quiet the child you came here with? There is a prayer I want to pray for you or you. I want you to pray for yourself now before you sit down. Thank God for a meeting like this and the issue of the end time, which I happen to be an authority in by the grace of God, having been to heaven and hell not less than 50 times and have written books numbering not less than 50 and more that are in the press on the issue of the end time. It's a sad news, but we have to say it, that majority of us here are on the way to hellfire. Jesus said, seek to enter, strive to enter, I mean, for many shall seek to enter. 
but will be able. Is that what he said? What did he say? Will not be able. How many is many? How many is many? Huh? He said, strive to enter. For many shall seek to. Not that they don't want to. But they will not be able. And the word of the Lord said, Let he that stand, take heed, lest he fall. I said it's a sad news that majority of us here are on the way to hell. But thank God for a meeting like this, which is meant for you to have an opportunity for what? For a turnaround. It's a sad news. It is sad. I move around cities, from city to city, trying to populate hell. This prayer you are going to pray now will help you. And I want you to pray it with me. Say, Oh Lord. Say, Oh Lord. In the name of Jesus, I surrender myself to hear the word of eternal life. I don't want to go to hell. I want to be in heaven. Remove my name from the number of the many that are on the way to hell. Open your mouth and pray for yourself quickly. Christ. In the name of Jesus we pray. Brother, let me tell you something. This thing is now more than race. We used to call it heavenly race, but it's now more than race. It's now a battle. Because most of us will not make heaven. It's no more just ordinary race. It's now a battle. I saw bishops I saw people you least expect in hell. He that stand, let him take heed, lest he fall. If the righteous be scarcely saved, if the righteous, not the sinners in the hotel, the prostitutes, not the armed robbers, if the righteous be scarcely saved, Even if you didn't go to school and you don't know the meaning of scarcity, in Nigeria, where we have first scarcity, that will help you to know the meaning of scarcity. When you hear there is first scarcity, it means there is what? Huh? No fear. And so even if you didn't go to school, in case you don't understand that scripture, that the righteous themselves will be scarcely saved. You will need to understand that this meeting is the final opportunity for somebody. It's not a jamboree, but there is a grace that stands with me everywhere I go to minister as a living witness to transfer names from the book of death to the book of life. And as we share, I want you to open up yourself and escape for your life. If the righteous be scarcely saved, says it all. I have a book, very controversial, but it's beautiful. We need more of controversies because the truth must be restored. Jesus was controversial, but in the truth, on the right path, very radical. I'm going to tell you the story of that 99% of a book and then many other books that the Lord is using to sanitize the church and save souls all over the world. I want you to understand and get it very clear that this is somebody's last opportunity. When I was sitting down there, the Lord told me how many people here 
that are prepared for rapture. And if I tell you the number, you will cool down and listen very well. Praise God. If I tell you the number, you will understand that covering our hair, not only a ring, is not it all. It's part of it, but that's all, not all. And so, no movement. Sit down, listen to the Lord, and let us pray this night that the names of those who are on the way to hell will be reduced and the book of life is going to increase. Can I hear your amen? Can I hear a better amen? Can I hear a born again amen? God bless you. You may be seated. I don't know how you will feel the sight of a man that has been to hell and to heaven not less than 50 times in the past 30 years. I don't know how you can feel the sight of such a man. Such a person cannot be normal. To have the grace to be exposed to see men and women, some of the people who he knows, that will languish in eternal hellfire forever, begging him to help when there is no more help. My brother from another mother, Paul Rika, was giving me the topic to minister. Divine revelations ready to the situation of the church. Okay, divine revelation and remedy of the state of the church. Did somebody get it? Praise the Lord. I thank God for people like him in this our time because the church is in trouble. There's no pretense about it. The church has left the state of sleeping is in the state of decay. Praise the Lord. I want you to open the book of Revelation chapter 1. Revelation chapter 1 and I want somebody that can read for me quickly because I want to make use of time. Because we want to depopulate hell and populate heaven. There are some of you that think you are standing but you are falling. But at the end of this you will have an opportunity to have a change of garment. Revelation chapter 1, verse 1. Can I have a very wonderful reader that can read for me loud? Can you give the person the microphone quickly? Is that Kim James? Can I have Kim James? Right? What are you reading? Revelation chapter 1, verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him. Yes. Which must shortly come to pass. Sir, read it again with microphone so that those who are anywhere they are can hear it very well. Can we go? The shoe unto his servant. Come again, come again. Start afresh. The, okay. The revelation of Jesus Christ. Which the revelation of Jesus Christ, I want you to understand something, sweetheart, which God that the Bible did not end in the book of Revelation by accident. Revelation is God's last armor in this end time. Because even if you look around now, you see that people are not taking the word of God very serious anymore. Which God gave unto him. Which God showed unto him to, to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. Show to his servants things which must not may come to pass. Go ahead. And he sent and signified it by his angel. And he sent and signified it. 
Unto his servant John. Unto his servant John. Who by record of the word of God. Who by record of the word of God. And of the testimony of Jesus Christ. From the testimony of Jesus Christ. Of all things that he saw. Of all things that he saw. Verse 3. Blessed is he that read it and they that hear the words of this prophecy. Blessed is he that read it and they that hear the words of this prophecy. Go ahead. And to keep those things which are written therein. What? Come again. And to, to keep those things which are written therein. And, and to keep those things which are written therein. For the time is at hand. Turn to your neighbor say there's no more time. Turn to the next neighbor say there's no more time. If you don't escape now, you will have yourself to blame eternally. Now listen, John was an apostle of Jesus Christ, a servant of Jesus Christ, a disciple of Jesus Christ, like most of us here that are ministers of God. The graduates of ignorance look down on divine revelations because they did not understand that people like Paul were given entrance revelations of the third heaven and so many things he was not even allowed to hear. In our own time, it cannot be different. Because God has not changed. And moreover, we need more of the divine revelations in this time than any other time. But that notwithstanding, we must be careful about the fake, fake divine revelations that are going to flood everywhere. Jesus told me to warn the church. Because that is the way of the devil. You have not forgotten the little girl that was following Paul and Silas. Say what looked like truth, but she was not part of the truth. And so the church is meant to wash out against that. Now, looking at what I want to share with us, the topic I want to share, because I'm going to pass through that line, and then share one or two uh, more divine revelations along the line. The state of the church now is causing tears in heaven. The Bible said there is joy for one sinner that is saved. The church is no more saving sinners. The church is now making members, not citizens of heaven. And so the church has become a gate of hell. Thank God for a church like this that believes in the truth. Before I came here, I asked, what is the stand of this church? Because I'm not looking for where to go. And I understood that they are still on the lost side. Now, in a divine revelation before I come to other things. Jesus Christ came to me and took me into the realm. There was a massive minister's conference and everybody was there. Big, the mighty, the small, the entire hall was filled. A very mighty cathedral. I am bearing this witness before the Lord Jesus Christ and God Almighty. And as everybody was seated, everybody was quiet. Nobody was talking. It was very solemn. All of a sudden, Jesus Christ came out from the altar. His face was so sad. His eyes were red. He was so sad that he could not talk. And then he began to use his hand to move 
today, all the ministers that were in the front row, second row, until he got to the row where I was, and he stopped, and he called me by name, and said, can Paul stand up? And I stood up. All these people that were sent away, were sent to damnation. And many of them are big ministers that I know in this country and outside the country. And I was told to warn one of them urgently before he died. I didn't do that and he died. Now, the meeting started. What was the meeting about? The state of the church. Church has completely failed. When you go to a church where you are told the truth, you run away. You look for Broadway church that is on the way to hell. When you come to a place where they are preaching a cost gospel, you settle down. You feel good. You enjoy the funky gospel. Why? Because your soul has been sold. Jesus Christ began to speak about the use of charms in the church. Familiar spirits. This manufacturing of prayer points. Brethren, is there any disciple of Jesus that you saw that was praying prayer, fire prayer? The ones that wanted to introduce it. Jesus said you don't know the spirit you belong to. But today, fire, 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 vengeance spirit in the name of warfare. The Lord began to speak. About the dressing of the women in the church. Some churches when they close you think they are prostitutes. A woman will come to church with her breast open. Looking for who to breastfeed. Manchester United. If you don't take time their breast will jump into your mouth. And we are tolerating it. We have allowed it. It has taken over every place. What has God done to us? A person that is wearing trousers will come to do praise and worship. What God says is an abomination. And the church will say, God, you say it's abomination. We are going to give you abomination now. Then abomination will be coming and doing praise and worship. To which God... Now listen, the purpose of the church is for perfection of the saints. According to the book of Ephesians, Jesus is coming back for a glorious church without wrinkles or pimple. Are you hearing me? He's coming back with a, with, for a church that has no spots. The church we have today, if we can tell ourselves the truth, doesn't only have wrinkles or spots. It has bleached herself beyond recognition by the husband. Now let me tell you something. We all are guilty. One of the things that we this meeting or by you all listening to this message is that you are going to rise up as an army we have kept quiet for too long some of you here still listening to people that operate by familiar spirits I will share divine revelations with you but I want to lay a foundation that will raise you up as a total army of Christ a radical for Jesus that will leave this convention and go 
like mighty people in a battle. If Elijah did not rise, Baal worship were taken over the land. Already the altar of God has been broken down. And God was waiting for a man. He was looking for a man. It can even be a woman that will stand in God and let him be God. I want to start by showing you something in the book of Galatians. I want to show you this in the book of Galatians for a reason. And then I will show you some divine revelations of the encounters that I have had with the Lord over these issues. Galatians chapter 1. I want a good reader from verse 1. Be very attentive. If you want to escape, if you want to make use of this grace that is passing here. Galatians chapter 1 from verse 1. And let's go quickly. Galatians chapter 1 from verse 1. Yes. Paul, an apostle, not of men, neither by man. Paul, Jesus an Christ. apostle. Uh -huh. Paul, an apostle, not of men. Not what? Not of men. What we have today in the church are men of the people. Not men of God. Men that want to tell the people what they want to hear and not what Jesus, God, is saying. He said, Paul, not made by man. Paul, an apostle, not made by man. Not walking to please any man. Can Paul has no friend except Jesus. Because I know I'm going to step on many toes. And I have died 2,000 years ago. And I'm no more alive on my own. But Jesus is the one living. I live here today. I'm going to my mansion. I have already spent 15 minutes there before. And I'm sure to return there. So I cannot compromise the truth. I last week. Massive crowd. Wonderful repentance. That land can never be the same again. I told them the truth that the problem that is in Christendom is that Christ called us to be soldiers but we choose to be civilians. Muslim. If, if Christianity is given to Muslim, Muslim people, Christ will come this week. I'm telling you the truth. If, if the spirit of ignorance that is using them, if we can be positive about this very meeting and go out as soldiers, do you know what a soldier is meant for? If we go out as soldiers, we will change Benin, we will change this country, we will affect this world, we will prepare for the coming of Christ. The church is not preparing. Our, our, our so-called Christian leaders are more interested in buying private jets that will jet to hell. When souls are wasting, the poor are in the church, the missionaries have no money to go and preach the gospel. And the hidden, the world is not judging the church. You open your Facebook, they are using the church as a joke. You feel ashamed. To say that you belong to the church. Please go ahead quickly. Go ahead. Paul an apostle not of men. Paul an apostle not of men. Neither by man. Neither by man. But by Jesus Christ. But by Jesus Christ. Go ahead. And God the Father. Eh? And God the Father who raised him from the dead. And God the Father who raised him from the dead. Verse 2. And all the brethren which are with me unto the churches of Galatia. Grace be to you. And peace from God the Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil world. That he might do what? Deliver, deliver us. us from this present evil world. world. But the church has so much married to the world that delivering the church is impossible. 
It is not a personal issue. Married to the world so much. Can you imagine that I was with Jesus Christ? The Lord Jesus came to me and said, Came Paul, Saul, let's go. I want to show you something. When we are at a junction, this is heaven. This is hell. And a multitude of people that I cannot count. It's like when you go to a marketplace where a crowd are moving. And they were carrying their Bibles, singing hymns, heading to hellfire. And they never knew what hellfire they were heading to. The Bible says that there is a way that seemed good to a man. But the end is destruction. And the Bible made us understand that there is a broad way that many are following to destruction, which is hell. And I was with Jesus there. And these people were trooping. I was asking the Lord, where are these people going? They were with their Bibles. They were busy singing hymns. I wanted to know, Lord, where are they going to? The Lord kept quiet. I was asking, I was inquisitive. He said, wait, you will know. Hell opened the mouth and swallowed all of them. Are you among them? Are you among those that are carrying the Bible, reading Holy Bible, but you refuse to live holy life? The Bible you carry is reading holy. That's the first word. But you, you denounce and deny holiness. Hellfire is waiting for you. All of them, the number you cannot count. And then, uh, before you know it, another sect we are coming. Do you know that since we started this evening ministration, that millions of people have entered hell all over the world. And another group we are coming. All of a sudden, a group of demons appeared before me and Jesus and began to mock him. Began to insult him. Began to spit at him. They said, you, useless man, you died in vain. Look at the people you said you died for. We are harvesting them. They were insulting Jesus to the point that Jesus began to weep. Blood was coming out of his eyes. Because of you. And he turned to me and said, son, look at what I'm taking because of the church. Look at the blood I said on the cross is coming from my eyes. Look at the people I died for. Look at what they are doing to me. Jesus was weeping. The blood was coming out as if he was going to form an ocean. I began to weep. And the Lord took me. We settled down. The book of life was opened. And I was watching to see the names. Something in me was like, let me see so-so person. Let me try to see so-so person. I was stretching my leg. And the face was blowing them. Open the pages. Scanty. Many pages you will go through before you see one name. Many pages you will go through before you see another name. Many pages you will go before you see another name. And Jesus turned to me and said, look at the book of life. Empty. And we have churches everywhere. We have churches everywhere. Jesus is shedding tears of blood. Immediately Jesus began to shed tears. The blood coming from his eyes covered the book of life. And he turned to me and said, my son, what have I done to merit this? Did I die in vain? If this is it, if this is the church I died for, I died in vain. Are you among the people cursing Jesus? Tears. Are you going to wake up from this convention and say, Lord, you will not cry again. Even if you don't have anybody, send me. I'm ready to give my life. I will stand for your truth everywhere. Even if the whole world will leave me. I'm going to share something with you. Let's read on. I want to show you something in the scripture. 
Verse 4. And the army must wake up here. Go ahead, quickly. Who gave himself our sins? Yes. That he might deliver us from this present evil world. This present evil world. What are you enjoying in this world? Is it the assertion? Is it the Jezebel fashion you have in the world today? If time permit me, I tell you about these things you wear. You will not go home with them if you wear them here. Go ahead quickly. According to the will of God and our Father. Five. To whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Six. I marvel that ye are so soon re removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ. I marvel that you are so soon removed from him. The church that Jesus Christ bought with his blood. Removed from him that died. Do you know what Jesus suffered? Do you know the kind of thing that Jesus went through? Please go ahead. I want to show you something quickly. Six. Yes. I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ. Yes. Unto another gospel. E unto another gospel. What is the problem of the church? Another gospel. You come to a church like this where the truth is preached. You are told the truth. You go to the one the right. I feel all right. Funky gospel. Do it the way you wanna. It doesn't matter. Jesus Christ took me to hell. And he took me to a section of hellfire. Written boldly there was, it doesn't matter. And the people there were biting their fingers, gnashing their teeth more than other people. And I asked the Lord, why are these people like this? And what is this all about? He said, the sin called, it doesn't matter. We send more people to hellfire than every other sin. Don't wear trousers. It doesn't matter. Stop putting this cow tail you are putting on your head. You call it detachment or attachment. It doesn't matter. Stop this. It doesn't matter. Don't do this. It doesn't matter. Little lie. Little thing. What you think that it doesn't matter. When you read my book called The Judgment Day. You will see that that day it will become a subject matter. And when it doesn't matter, becomes subject matter. And you don't have an opportunity to make amendment anywhere. Because in eternity, everything is fixed. You will be the highest to regret. In hellfire, the people that regret most are Christians. Or so-called Christians. Who had the opportunity to escape. They regret more than the unbeliever. Who goes to club. Who goes to arm robbery? Who live as he or she lies? But you are in the wire. You are an usher, ushering people to hell. You are in the wire, polluting the work of God. You are, you are in the church, but the world is still living in you. It doesn't matter. They were biting their fingers. They were crying more than other people. They were under more torment. In hellfire you have torments, not torment. The torment of hell is not the greatest torment in hellfire. There are different types of torments in hellfire that you will face forever and ever. There was a story of a bird that was going to come down from the moon to the earth. To pick a grain of sand until it finishes the sand that is all over the world. And what it would take this bird to come down from the moon and pick one grain of sand and go back to the moon is two million years. Coming down one million. Going back one million. And it has to pick all the grain of sands both on the land in the water, the shore, it has to pick all. I was listening to this story. And if this bird succeeds in picking all the sand in the world, eternity has not started. 
That is where somebody here wants to go and spend his life. One million years eternity has not started. And you have the opportunity to escape now. Tell that boy, I'm no more interested. Tell that girl, I don't want to go to hell. Whatever you need to drop today, to receive mercy today, if you miss it, you might not have the opportunity again. There is a grace that is passing here. Go on, quickly. Verse 7. Yes. Which is not another. Which is not another. Preachers of what? Another gospel. And the problem the church has. Prosperity in sin. Motivational speaking. Salvation has been killed. Repentance and old English. Holiness is edicted out of their Bible. Righteousness, they will describe it to you. That Jesus has died. Jesus does not die for us to remain in sin. Jesus died to save us from sin. Go ahead, quickly. But there be some that trouble you. But there be some that trouble you. And will pervert the gospel of Christ. Those who pervert the gospel of Jesus Christ. They are troubling you. But they are the people you watch in cable. You watch them on television. When they announce crusade, you go. Some of you are still members of church. Where you go and remain comfortable in your sin. Jesus said they are troubling you. But you are encouraging them, mobilizing them with your tithe and offering. And you will must go to hell for that. Anybody that is in a church that is not a gate of heaven, every tithe, every offering you are giving there will be used in judgment against you. Because you are walking against Christ. If you go to a church for three months, your character is not changing. You were a fornicator. Well, before you were fornicating with three people, now you are fornicating with six. You don't need to be told that you are not in the gate of heaven. You are a liar. Now you have increased your lying. Something is wrong. And if you do not escape, be terrible. The problem we have is the preachers of their gospel, gospel and you that listen to them. Go ahead, quickly. That's it. Yes. But though we or an angel from heaven. For although we or an angel from heaven. Go ahead. Preach any other gospel unto preach you. Preach any other gospel to you. Go ahead. Than that which we have preached. Than that which we have preached. Go ahead. Unto you let uh, him be a cause. Unto you let him be a cause. The church is celebrating the preachers of a cause gospel. If there is going to be solution, it must start from the correction. A preacher of an accursed gospel is an antichrist. It doesn't matter his name. It doesn't matter how big the church is. Anybody that undermines holiness undermines God. Holiness is the nature of God. Holiness without which no man shall see God. It's the nature of God. It's the whole thing. Because if you live in this world and you didn't see God, what is it all about? Go ahead quickly. Verse 9. Yes. As we said before. As we said before. So say I now again. So. Say I now again. I repeat it again because it's dangerous. Because it is important that you know it. Go ahead. If any man preach any other gospel. If any man, bishop, archbishop. If any man. Can Paul has no respect for anybody preaching gospel that is outside salvation message. I preach prosperity. I preach miracle. God uses me to prophesy. I operate in the fivefold ministry. But the salvation of the soul of anybody is why Christ came here to die.
If anybody, any man, from today, when you own your television and see them, you close it. If you don't do that, you are against Christ. If any man preaches any other gospel, let him be declared a cost. Now let me say this to somebody. If the church can rise up and declare every preacher of a cost gospel a cost, the church will start recovering. Why do we have Christians that don't have any attribute of Christ? The real gospel has been adulterated. People go to church with sober reflection without thinking where they will spend eternity. Because what is coming out from the pulpit is pushing them into the pit. When the pulpit is supposed to pull people out of the pit, it's pushing them out of the pit. Pushing them into the pit. A pastor read 99% and repented and confessed and called us that he buried the head of a woman in his altar. When I sent people there, the door, they brought out the head of a woman dripping fresh blood, buried since eight years. He can see the color of your pant. He can tell you the name of your grandfather. And he's using the Bible. Preaching the gospel. One of them came to me. And said sir I read your book. Satanic churches. And something was telling me. I was hearing a voice telling me. If you don't go and confess. In seven days you will die. He came to me and said. He had a tortoise in his stomach. That they took him somewhere. So that he can make it. And he swallowed a small tortoise. And with this tortoise he prophesies. He rides jeeps. But Satan has no free gift. When the thing wanted to kill him, he began to look for deliverance. Please go ahead. Finish this. Let me share some divine revelations that are going to get you out of hell tonight and before we are going to pray and give people opportunity to escape from hellfire. And get their names in the book of life. Quickly, let's go. Verse 9. Yes. As we said before. As we said before. So say I now and again. So say I now and again. If any man preach any other gospel. If any man preach any other gospel. Unto you than that ye have received. Unto you, apart from the one Jesus Christ and the apostles have preached as they preached it. Go ahead. Let him be a cause. Let him be a cause. Ten. Uh -huh. For do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? Now let me tell you something. A minister that wants to please men and not God cannot be called a man of God. It's not possible. Look at what is happening in the church today. You see somebody that is not born again, you make him a deacon because he has money. I went to one church one man that is a deacon in that church wants to send away the wife and marry another wife. And the Lord revealed it to me when I was ministering. And I was asking the man, the man was, eh, eh, eh. I called the pastor, I said, look at what the Lord is saying. He said, it's true, we'll talk about it after. Do you know what he told me after? That this man is a financial pillar in the church. That if he handle him anyhow, he will run away. That's the church we are running. And I told him, if you don't put this man in order, the hammer of God will fall on your head. Who tell you that somebody is a financial pillar? Jesus that brought money out of the mouth of the fish. Is he in the grave? Is he not alive? Is he not the same today? Please go ahead and finish it and let's share something quickly. For do I now persuade men or God? Do I have to persuade men or God? Quickly. Or do I seek to please men? Do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, For I shall not be the servant of Christ. If I yet please men, what? Men. I should what? I should not be the servant of Christ. I should what? 
I should not be the servant of Christ. We have men pleasers, seekers of their empires, not the kingdom of God, all over the place. And you follow to celebrate them. And that day God will use it in judgment against you. When you read my books and you don't make heaven, no, you are a seed of hell. Do you know why? It's pointed to you one direction. And downloading mysteries for you that will enable you to prepare yourself. We are in a time of preparation. The last time that Jesus Christ was with me over one of the books that I wrote called Time is Finished. See his mood. If you see his attitude, you will know that we are really, really disappointing the Lord. For the first time, I heard God the Father speak to Jesus anyhow. He said, you, go and gather for me in my sense, those who are ready. He was no more ready for Jesus pleading. And Jesus turned to me and said, son, time is finished. He said, go and write that book fast. Relay what you have seen. Relay what has happened. Because there is no more time. Many of us here are living as if we have our lives in our hands. If you die now, your rapture has happened. The old die, the young die. One of the girls that died in the last plane crash was going to keep a date with a sugar daddy. The parents did not know. She went into eternity from that, unprepared. Where you see now? Hellfire. Hellfire. Finish this reading quickly. Verse 11. Yes. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. It's not after man. It's after the heartbeat of God. And what is his heartbeat? Soul. 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 That is what the heart of God is beating. Soul. 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 And many ministers are no more hearing the heartbeat of God. That is why they can mount the pulpit and be entertaining sinners that are on the way to hell. Entertaining sinners that are on the way to hell. Why did I come here? I don't have any human strength to come here. I come here because I'm hungry for a soul that will enter the book of life. That will escape from hell. And you might be that person. I don't want to know how many years you are born again. Because this thing we are burning up and down. Most of them are not genuine. Our altar call today is a joke. People come out, you see them. And it's like a joke. Those days when you see people giving their life to Christ, you see tears. How many times have you seen people cry in the church? When a man who says a man of God at this last minute, when Jesus, the trumpet, I was ministering in a cafe. Nine angels entered my hotel room with Jesus. The trumpets that we are carrying, we are reading no more time. All the trumpets. I, 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 I thought that that day rapture will happen. The Lord is doing everything possible to help us to escape. No more time was written on the, on, the, on the trumpet of these nine angels. The rest of them surrounded everywhere. If you see them, you know that we are jokers. I ask us every day in the church, when we are singing and dancing, are we dancing because we are on the way to heaven or hell. I'm not against dancing in the church. I know how to dance in the church. I know how to dance for God. But the question is, a sinner that is dancing, is he or she dancing for what? Even if you think you are praising God, the Bible says that the prayer of a sinner is abomination to God. 
Is it then his praise and worship? The only thing God will rejoice for. The only thing that makes the father of the prodigal son run. The only thing that makes God to run is when a prodigal son or daughter returns. When there is a genuine repentance. I was sitting down here and the Lord told me the number of people here who are rapture set now. I shake my head. I shake my head. One day Jesus Christ came to me on a Sunday morning, very early in the morning. He said, son, come let us go and worship. And he gave me a cloth he has. The same thing with the one he was wearing. Immediately I put it on, we left. On emotion. When we get to each church, he will shake his head. He will refuse to enter. We were looking for church where to worship until daybreak. I woke up physically. Some churches, when we get everybody there, is naked. Like the Lord showed me here, that many people here are naked. Some their own garment that is supposed to guarantee them heaven is torn. Some are full of sports. And that is why when I make a call, and you want to genuinely turn from hell, you rush out, and let it not be like one you have been doing before, and if you get a new garment this night, make sure you don't stain it. We walked, we moved everywhere. We didn't see a church to worship. And Jesus turned to me and started weeping. I'm tired of seeing Jesus weep. And he said, does it mean I died in vain? Could it be that Jesus died in vain in your life? I met a man called Pastor Matthias in hell. He was somebody I ministered to. He's a pastor. But I told him about certain things he used to do. He should stop them. And I didn't see him for, a, for some time. He died and went to hell. And when I visited hell in divine revelation with Jesus, look at Pastor Matthias. He was begging me to beg Jesus. Jesus turned away his face. If you see the torment he was on, if you go to hell and see somebody you know there, if you come out, you won't be normal again. He was crying to me, saying, remember we used to be friends. He hears you. He will hear you beg him. I turned to see whether Jesus was looking. He turned his face away. And I moved to turn to his front to ask him, he said, this is the land of no mercy. How many of you want to spend eternity in the land of no mercy? How many of you will like to mess up this opportunity? A meeting like this don't hold every day. When I finish here now, I'm moving to Oweri. From Oweri to Makodi. From Makodi to Kogi to Kebi. We are moving around, giving the opportunity to those who want to escape. If you want to escape, this is your opportunity. Now listen to this. For those of you that go to churches where you are not prepared for heaven. One day I was in my room. Jesus Christ suddenly appeared physically. The door was locked. He appeared right inside the room. And he turned into identical two. Almighty God in heaven, you are hearing me. Jesus, I'm bearing this witness before you and the earth. He turned into identical two. You cannot know the difference. And he said, this is the end time strategy. Of the devil against the church and the believers. The devil has turned to Jesus. He's no more having tail. He's no more having a horns. He's now carrying the Bible. He is now. Pre
preaching the gospel. But one thing you will use to know him. He will have no passion to save souls. He will give you miracle. He will give you money. He will appear good. But he, the passion to bring people to heaven will never be there. I want to show you a scripture. And then I share some divine revelations. And then I call people out of hell now. I don't care whether you're a pastor. I was ministering in Oweri. And the Lord said there was a pastor there. I have shown you the revelation of rapture twice and you missed it. And you're about to die. The devil is about to kill you in a week's time. And the man ran out. Shouting, you were there. I am the one. I came all the way from Abba. I nearly missed this meeting. And I was seeing it that I was going to die. I missed rapture two times. This, early, uh, this morning when I woke up, a woman called me and was crying. She said, sir, there was rapture in the night and I missed it. And I've been crying and I called you to tell me what I'm going to do. I said, I don't know you. I don't know your lifestyle. But God loves you for showing you this revelation. I asked her to send it to, to send, text it to me. And he text said it is in my phone. There are some of you here, you have had revelation of rapture and you missed it. One thing that makes me afraid is that most of the, the Christians that have had revelation of rapture, most of them that have told me missed it. To show you that this is a serious matter. Very serious matter. I told them in a way that that night, just like this night, the Lord was going to show revelation. The Lord with Jesus will appear to people and show revelations of the rapture and this end time. And exactly the Lord did it, even to children. When you listen to the cassette, body pass, body pass one, body pass two, body pass. Because the time we are now in time for body pass, not ticketed anymore. You can be a Christian and still go to hell if you don't have your body pass. If you are not purified, at that second that the Lord will come, you miss it. Brethren, it is a great privilege, it's a great grace for us to depopulate hell tonight. For you to escape because you don't know when you will die. You don't know when the enemy is targeting to kill you through sin. And make sure you spend eternity in hell. Your soul is too precious to perish eternally. First John chapter 2. Is it 13 and 14? Let's try it out. Finally. And then I share some other divine revelations. And then I call you to escape. I call you to escape. It doesn't matter who you are. I call you to escape. If, if the devil was out to stop Jesus from going back to heaven, who are you? The devil called Jesus and said, look at this glory. Look at all these beautiful girls with figure eight. Look at the gold and the silver of this earth. Look at the mansions. Look at the private church, the limousines. Look at all these things. Just bow for me and I will give them to you. The church has bowed to those things. That Jesus rejected. Many ministers have bowed to it. If the devil believed he could stop Jesus from returning to heaven, then he has not given up on you. I preached a topic in one church. The pastor of the church, the bishop of the church, got born again that day. I said, The devil has not given up on anybody. Oh, when you read that the, 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 he, he walks to and fro, what is he looking for? Eh? He's looking for your soul. He goes down, he didn't get you, he's coming up. He's, the devil is more committed than the church. He's looking for your soul. And that is why you that think you stand, you better take heed. If the devil could go for Peter 
to sift him like chaff so that he can burn in hell fire eternally. Pocket that your title. <laughs> Keep that your G.O. somewhere. If the devil could take one tenth of the angels and is going to spend eternity in hell with them, my dear, take heed. It's not a joke. It's more serious than we know. And do you know what? God is not a respecter of persons. He's a respecter of principles. Please read it so that we can quickly share some divine revelations and then give people opportunity to escape. Quickly. First John chapter 2. First John chapter 2. Check out 13 and 14 quickly. I write unto you fathers. Uh-huh. Go ahead. I write unto you fathers because ye have known him that is from the beginning. I write unto you young men because ye have overcome the wicked world. I write unto you little children because ye have known the father. 14. I have written unto you fathers because ye have known him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you young men because ye are strong and the word of God abided in you and ye have overcome the wicked world. Now listen. Every strength you have now must be directed towards striving to make heaven. Now don't misunderstand me. You don't make heaven by your own effort. You make heaven by grace. But grace is meant to give you the strength, the enablement to make it. Some people think that grace is a license for nonsense. Grace is meant to help you overcome sin. Grace, the Bible said, do we continue in sin for grace to abound? And he said, God forbid. Now, there's something I want you to take note. The Bible tells us, there's no time. The Bible tells us that the Antichrists are already here. Is that what the Bible said? Eh? Am I right? Is it not what the Bible said? The Antichrist are where now? They are already in our midst. That's what the Bible said. And the Antichrist are already in our midst. Let me tell you something. The mark of six seeds is already around. But it will be revealed like the man of God was saying on that day. The Antichrist are already around, but they will be revealed later. Many of the ministers... Many of the churches you see today are Antichrist ministers and Antichrist churches. Some of them started well, but the Antichrist spirit has entered them. Antichrist, the Bible, the Bible, not me, says, are here already. Some of you are going to Antichrist churches. Any church that is not operating according to Hebrew 10.25 is an Antichrist church. Go home and read what he said. Not undermining the assembling of yourselves together. As the manner of some is. As you see the day approaching. Any church that is not preparing you for this approaching day of rapture. Is an antichrist church. No matter the type, the name of the church. Antichrist is already here. They will be revealed. It would, the, the, the revelation is going to come on that day. But they are already in operation. The spirit is already everywhere. The Lord showed me ministers with mark of scissors in their hands. And some of them are in this country. You need to understand revelation. Understand the meaning of revelation. That's why some people read the book of revelation. They can't understand it because they can't download it. There are some portions of the book of Revelation you read, you get confused. And this beast did this, and this and that. If you cannot download them, you won't understand them. And these ministers are laying hands upon you. Lay hands upon you and you get prosperity and your soul is lost. Lay hands upon you, you get healed in your body, but your soul is exchanged. There are antichrist pulpits. You need to know them. 
any minister that is not hungry and thirsty for souls is a gold seller and is an agent of hell. I was in heaven. The Lord took me into an area. There were mansions, beautiful golden mansions. And they were weeping. They were blowing alarm. And I asked the Lord, who are the owners of this? He said, these are supposed to be Christians. These are their mansions. And these mansions are crying because they are about to miss heaven. Each time they are committing sin, the mansions will blow in alarm that there is danger. And I looked around, I saw their garments tattered. Are you among them? The highest thing God has done for you this year is that you are in this meeting. You are on message to be able to change what you need to change, to cry to the Lord now. Massaging the ego of sinners is the gospel we hear every day. My brother was telling you about the materials. You need these materials to help yourself. You play them in your car, you read them, because if you don't study, you will not be approved for heaven. The Bible says study to be approved. If you don't study, you will be approved. I want to share this with you. One or two revelations, divine revelations, and then we, we pray. God can forgive your sins. God can save you today. You, you, let me tell you something. You can live above sin. You can. If God said be holy, it is because you can if you task him. When God gives you a task that you think is more than you, task him. If he said be holy for I am holy, you can. If you begin to believe, and behave, you become. Are you hearing me? Your soul is too precious. I love you. And Jesus loves you more. You are too beautiful to go to hell. You are too... Do you know what happened one day? Jesus Christ said, let me show you the jubilation in hell. When a serious Christian comes to hell. When a minister comes to hell. I was with Jesus. And when we get to the gate of hell, he said, Enter first. Let me stay back. And I entered. Satan and the, all the demons, they were jubilating, shouting, shaking everywhere. They thought, I have died and come to hell. This, their worst enemy that has snatched souls, have come here. They were celebrating and Jesus walked in. The celebration died. And he said, Son, I want to show you so that you can go and warn my minister. Paul said after ministering to others that you don't want to end their castaway to show you that this is not a joke. He said after preaching to others that his prayer is that he will not want to be a castaway. That shows you that this thing is not a joke. It's a serious matter. I have shared hand with almost everybody that is written in the Bible that made heaven. And heaven is too beautiful for you to miss. If time permits me to share things more with you, let me tell you something. You will live here a militant for Jesus. Not just you are saved. Jesus Christ showed me beautiful mansion. I said, who are all the of this? Who are the people living in this street? He said, this is evangelistic street. These people evangelized with their life while they were on earth. Somebody was asking the man of God a question. Let me tell you something. If you don't win a soul, you cannot enter heaven. Any tree that does not bear fruit is cut down and cast into hellfire. Whether you can win soul by your lifestyle, the way you live, People are watching you. You are an epistle that many people are reading. The best preaching you can do is your lifestyle. But that's not alone. You must testify of Jesus. You must be a witness of Jesus to other people. If, if you are ashamed of me, I will be ashamed of you before my father and the angels on that day. And so when Jesus is ashamed of you, where will you end? 
Everybody here today, you must wake up as an evangelist. Go and depopulate her. You are saved to save others. And the Lord pointed the mansion and said, These are people that evangelize with their lives. Let me say something to you. If you see your mansion in heaven, you will never want to miss heaven. That's why people like us are given the divine revelations so that they can share with others. Because everybody might not be have the opportunity. But why he has given people like us that grace is not because we are better than you. No. I believe I'm not better than anybody here. It's just the grace of God at work. And that grace is to show his love to every one of us. Time will not permit us to carry on. Because we would like to close on time. Can you stand by your feet everywhere you are? Can you stand by your feet everywhere you are? Draw me closer, closer to thee, Lord. Can somebody sing? Closer to thee. Draw me nearer, nearer to thee, Jesus.
红的浪，我立住，我立住，小妹。Number that day, when the saints will be marching in, will you make it? It's going to happen any moment now. It's going to happen any moment now. It's going to happen any second now. Jesus is around. He has sent me to warn you. He has sent me to prepare you. He has sent me to get you ready. Why should you live for her? Hey! Hey! I rebuke you here. I rebuke you, Satan. By the blood of Jesus, loose them and let them go. In Jesus' name, we pray. We pray in the name of Jesus. We pray in the name of Jesus. I saw a little boy in hell, and I asked the Lord, "What did he commit?" The Lord said, "Ask him." And I asked him. He said he stole twenty naira. Oh, twenty naira! But you're wicked. 
He says, stealing is stealing. And he said, look at the mother. The mother is here. For not training him in the way of the Lord. And so husbands and wives in hellfire still fighting. Even under the torment of the demons. Still fighting. And I said, Lord, why? He said, many marriages will lead many people to hell. How many marriages are working here? How many husbands and wives here are not fighting like cat and rat? Quarreling and keeping malice. That day you woke up in the morning and you didn't talk to each other. Can be the day rapture will come. And do you know the danger about rapture? You can be ready a minute. And in the next minute you are not ready. Go home and reconcile with your husband and with your wife. Don't claim who is right or who is wrong. Escape for your life. When you are escaping for your life, you don't want to know who is right or who is wrong. I looked at her. Huge full hair. Huge full hair. Fornication. Loss of the flesh. I wept for three days. Useful hair. Women full hair. For indecent dressing. I thought that in heaven there will be more women than men. I was surprised. You carry cow tail on your head. There's no big guy, there's no big girl, there's no bishop in hell. Everybody is treated equal. I saw Abacha, the former head of state of Nigeria. They used him as a grinding stone for pepper in hellfire. They used him to grind. That's what Abacha is being used in hell now. There's no but there, you are you are tied to your personality. Has no meaning in hell. In hell, everybody is repented genuinely, but too late. No big guy, no big girl in hellfire. Everybody in hellfire is gentle, but gentle too late. Genuinely repented, but too late. Why not do it now? The Bible said in hell, the rich man looked up. If he had looked up on earth, unto Jesus, unto repentance, if he has looked up and obtained mercy, he will have not ended where he ended. I saw one of the girls in our fellowship. Her name is Gloria. I saw her in her. She ran out to greet me and fell on the floor. The hell I has changed her color. Daddy, I said, who is this? He said, that is me. Want me, but see how where I have ended my life. On that day, God will show you this video that He sent me here with the grace that is sufficient to save you. You messed it up. Or you used it. There is use and there is abuse. If you are here and you want to escape, I don't want that you are born again 20 times or 30 times. Something in you will be telling you right now that you need to escape. When I ask you to rush, you run forward. When I ask you to do that, mercy of God. And the power of conviction follows it. That anywhere I go, hell is emptied. And heaven is populated. If you are there and you want to escape, you are not sure your name is in the book of life. Begin to come before this altar quickly. Whether you are upstairs, whether you are downstairs, whether you are on the main road, anywhere you are, whether you are bishop, begin to take a step. Escape. You must make a move. You must make a move. You must make a move. If you miss this opportunity,